This lesson introduces you to the Find utility. It can be used to locate a file or a set of files by name anywhere on disk. You can also include a command to be executed on the file or files when they are found. I happen to know there is a file named diff, D-I-F-F, -F, somewhere in a subdirectory of the user directory. The find command to locate it is constructed this way. The first argument passed to find is where it should start looking. You can specify a slash to have it look through the entire directory system, and it will also then look through all the file systems that you've mounted as it comes across the mount point of each one. The second argument specifies which file is to be looked for. There are many options to the find command. You can specify the date of a file, the size, uh, who it belongs to, or even its inode number. When you look at the man page of find, you'll see there are dozens of search options available. Finally, you'll need to specify what is to be done with the file when it's located. Now in this example, the print option is used to have the complete path name of the file listed, but you can have it do anything you want. There. Although it looked through several directories, it only found the one file. But it often happens that you want to find a group of files, or you want to find a file, but you only know part of its name. You can use an asterisk in the name in the place where you'll accept anything. For example, the following command will locate all files under the user bin directory that end with DIFF. Notice that when an asterisk is used, it's necessary to do something to protect it from the shell. If you don't, the asterisk will be interpreted by the shell program, which is the program that reads and executes your command line entries. Placing a backslash in front of a character notifies the shell that that character is to be taken literally and passed on to the command just as it is. The shell has some very special attitudes about asterisks, and I'll be showing you how those work in a future lesson. Now, here comes the funny part of the syntax. You'll probably need to put this in your notebook until you finally get it straight in your head. You can have any command you like executed when a file is found, and you can pass the name of that file to the command. For example, this is how you would locate the files and have the file command tell you the type of each one. The file command is executed on everything located by find. Okay, so it's not obvious how it works, but it makes sense once you see what it does. The exec option can be used to specify a whole command line full of stuff and can have any number of arguments. So it needs a semicolon to tell find where the exec command string ends. The problem is that the shell has an attitude about semicolons as well as asterisks, so it's necessary to put a backslash in front of it to tell it to leave it alone. The pair of squiggly braces is replaced by the name of the file. There's sort of an instruction to find that says, place file name here when executing command. The find command is very useful and can be used to do all sorts of things. Mostly it's used for simply locating something you've misplaced but it can be used to find files for backups or to find old work files that need to be deleted or many other things. Even with that odd syntax, it comes in very handy.